Hey gang, Scott here. Today's tip is about removing hot pixels in Photoshop. This is kind of rounding out what's turning into a long exposure week on the channel. At the beginning of the week, I shared a video with a review of Haida's new 17 stop ND filter. You know, it's very, very, very dark filter. You can get very long exposures. When we do those long exposures, our sensor is on longer, parts of it can heat up, and we get these hot pixels or you know, hot areas that are you know little red, green, and blue spots. Well, here I'll show you how to remove those in Photoshop and to do so in a targeted manner, because as I'll show you, there are some, uh, some side effects that can happen if you just try to apply one of these filters globally. So here is this photo, and let's go ahead and zoom in. In this area here, you can see right there, all these little red, green, and blue specks. You know, this was a multi-minute exposure, I think like six to seven minute exposure. And so the sensor was on and active for a long time. I ended up with some hot spots and they tend to show up a lot in the shadow areas. Now there is a very cool filter. I recommend doing this as a smart object with uh, Photoshop so you can go and tweak and change things and so forth. Under the filter area, we have noise, dust, and scratches. All right, let's move this over here and we can see a preview area, right? Now, I'll turn off the preview for a second so you can see the effect, right? You can see how things are changing. If I turn the preview back on, you'll notice many of those spots disappear. Not all of them, but pretty darn close. Like this blue one there is, is kind of a problem. Changing the radius can sometimes help increasing it a little bit, letting it find more of those pixels. You can see it really found everything with three. And everything else gets just a little bit soft, right? This is a form of noise reduction, and when we do that, we tend to soften things just a little bit. Uh, you can also play around with threshold. Now I'll push this over really far so we can see what's going on. That started to bring back some of the detail. You know, usually low numbers tend to work pretty well. Very low radius. If we go too far on the radius, it just gets all fuzzy and, and, and crazy. That's not what we want at all. But a lower radius, I had three, I think, where we landed before, and that seemed to have gotten rid of all of the tiny speckles. And then the threshold, playing with that, really kind of brought back some of the detail. And five looks pretty good there, so it's a pretty good compromise. So low numbers, just the radius until you see the set of uh, annoyingly colored pixels disappear, the ones you don't want, and then adjust the threshold so you recover some of that detail. I'll hit OK on that. And so now in our panel, we have the photo, smart filters, and dust and scratches, and we have a filter mask. So this filter right now, if I were to, let's zoom back out, take a look here, it's being applied everywhere, full white mask. I want to toggle this off and on and pay attention to the trees. Pay attention to the trees. Look what's going on up there. Be, you know, take that off, put it back on. Off, back on. See how things are getting a little muddy, a little bit fuzzy, uh, you know, looking up in those, those areas up in the trees. There's some shadows in there and maybe it's picking up some, uh, some messiness in there, but this is all like very, very soft and, and not looking good, right? If I turn that back off, oh, there's the there's the detail. There's that's what I expect those trees to look like. If I turn that back on, things get all muddy and soft again, and we don't want that. I'm losing lots of detail out there. So this is where to you want to apply this selectively. Apply it in the areas that you want. And let's just get this corner here. I'll select my mask. I hit Command I. I'm inverting my mask, so now I've removed that filter everywhere. I can see all my annoying spots have come back. You grab your brush. That's a pretty good size, and I'll just start painting that in, just in that shadowed area, right? So just there. And so that's taking care of those dark areas that have those annoying pixels. And I'll bet there's some out here as well, so I'll take care of that proactively. The point being, apply that dust and scratches filter selectively, just the areas that really need to be cleaned up. 
Otherwise, you tend to lose detail in other areas of your photo. So that's it. That's a hot pixel correction in Photoshop. Uh, this is the best method that I've found to deal with them, short of hunting for every single one and doing spot retouching on them, which works, but it is time consuming. Uh, there's a slightly less effective method in Lightroom. I had a video on that earlier this week that dealt really well with the uh, green, sorry, not the green, the blue and the red pixel. The green ones, it did, didn't didn't handle. It just made them bright but uncolored. So uh, if you have Lightroom CC, you've got the package, you have Photoshop, you have this available to you. If for any reason all you have is Lightroom, one of the older uh, versions of Lightroom, you can still do some level of correction without having to go hunt for every single pixel. Hope you found it useful. Got questions? Drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.